I didn't know how this was going to go because it's such a weird, unique, unusual thing. But hopefully it helps somebody. It definitely helps me. It helped me get out of my SI joint instability issue that I had. And I don't have that anymore. Today, we're going to be talking about a little trick that I use in my own personal life uh, to kind of help me maintain balance in my hip flexors and my body. It's a little weird. It's something I've actually never shared with anyone before. This is something specifically to use if you have an existing issue like a right left imbalance or just you can use it on both sides if you have generally overworked and um, you know too much tension in your hip flexors as a, a way to reduce the amount of work that they're doing, the overwork and also as a way to prevent an issue from coming back or prevent an issue from getting worse. It, it helps you along your journey. So I won't leave you hanging too long, but before I actually demonstrate it to you, you have to understand the problem. You know, the hip flexors are a group of muscles. So uh, here are three of them. Here's another one. The problem with these muscles is they're overworked. We use them too much and they're, that's part of the imbalance that we experience in our bodies and in our core is that the hip flexors become hypertonic, um, just overused, overworked, they become tight and uh, cause problems. So anything that you can do to kind of restore that balance uh, with the other muscles like the glutes, the abdominals, uh, to keep your pelvis and your spine in, in a more balanced state is a good thing. So the right side is the one on my body that is usually really tight, uh, has a lot of ten I hold a lot of tension in that side, and uh, it's my problem side. And that is associated with my SI joint that I've had problems with them in the past on my right side. And that's precisely because these tight hip flexors are pulling the pelvis on that side forward. So I use this trick. I'm going to show the trick right now. I'll explain to you what I'm doing and then why it's effective uh, after that. So I got my leg up here, core connection, right? So, so I did not let my spine collapse when I went to lift my leg because you know your hip flexor attaches to your spine. So if I go like this, it's pulling on my spine. So I want to have a strong connection here so that it's not yanking on my spine, but my spine is stable. So I go to lower my leg, hand underneath. I can use this hand out. I normally use the outside hand, but I'll use this hand here. And I'm going to pull into my hand. So this hand is pulling up and my, my leg is pulling back. And what that does is activates the glutes. Really what I'm doing with this trick is anytime I bring my leg down from something or off of something, I put my hand under my thigh and I press into it with force. And what that does is that activates the glutes on the back side. You know, the opposite side of these muscles on the back side here is the glutes. And so what that can do is just help balance out the amount of activity in the muscle groups surrounding your joint. And over a period of time, if you use this kind of on a regular basis, it can be a really effective way to prevent overuse of the hip flexors. I noticed that this became effective for me when I had SI joint problems. Almost every time I lifted my knee up, I would get a pop in my SI joint when I lowered my leg. And every time I'd get a pop in my SI joint, it's that instability, that hypermobility of the joint, sometimes with a little bit of pain and it's uncomfortable. Most of the time when you get that pop in your SI joint, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a whole video on SI joint pain, which I would recommend you watch so you can understand why that instability and popping is happening and how to stabilize it. So when I started using this trick, anytime I lowered my leg and I activated my glutes by grabbing my leg, that popping stopped happening. And over time, it allowed, when I used it consistently, it allowed that SI joint to stabilize even more. It contributed to the health and the stability of my SI joint. And now I can lift my leg up and lower it without even using that little trick and it doesn't pop anymore. So let's explain why this is effective. Say I'm going to do marching right now. I'm going to march my legs. Okay. I'm connected to my core. I'm marching. You would think that if, if I'm bringing my leg down, 
I'm actually using my glutes to do that, pulling my leg down, but I'm not. And that's because of gravity. So anytime you are lowering your leg from something, it's actually the hip flexors lowering the leg in an eccentric motion. So my hip flexors are doing all the work to lift the leg and all the work to lower the leg. But if I grab my thigh and put it under my thigh and put a resistance and I push into it, now that activates the glutes on the opposite side and it can be an effective way to some, through something called reciprocal inhibition to turn off the hip flexors when I'm using my leg and, I, and turn on the opposite muscle group. So anytime you use a muscle group, say I'm gonna use my bicep, the opposite muscle group, the tricep has to turn off. And so I pull with my bicep, the tricep turns off, extend with the tricep, bicep turns off. So I'm doing that with my leg. So I lift up, hip flexor, um, now I'm going to use my resistance to pull down with my glute rather than lowering with my hip flexor. And so I use this whenever I need to move my leg when I'm driving. And anytime you go to need to lower your leg off of something off of the bed, um, I guess this this might be the time where I share with everybody that I'm I'm one of those weird people that I use my leg, I use my foot to flush a toilet. I've always kind of done it that way. It's not a COVID thing. I just, you know, um, I use my foot to flush a toilet. It keeps me on my toes, literally. It keeps my balance sharp. And so what's one of the most common times that I use this trick is I go up to flush the toilet, boop. And when I bring my leg down, I grab it and I lower it with that resistance of my hand pulling up on my leg and my so my glute can push it down. So activates my glutes, prevents that hip flexor from popping. If you have an existing issue, it's to help you get out of a problem where you, you tend to overuse these muscles and we wanna try and just give them a break. Give them, especially if, you're, if you drive a lot. Driving is just hip flexor 100% of the time. Even if you are not moving your leg, you're just on the gas, you know, you're pressing on the gas 50%. There's a little activation in that hip flexor going on. That's why I like to use the cruise control because it can allow you to kind of fully relax. But when I'm moving my leg from off the gas into cruise control or back onto, you know, onto the brake forward and back, I'm using this trick, especially on a long road trip. And it really prolongs my ability to get through drives. Thank you guys all for being here. Until next time, down on the floor and connect to your core. See you next week.